Jesus Christ I think upon your sacrifice You became nothing Poured out to death Many times I wondered at your gift of life I'm in that place once again Once again, once again, I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again, I thank you. Once again, I pour out my life. Now you are exalted to the highest place King of the heavens, one day I'll bow But for now, I marvel at the saving grace I'm full of praise once again mm, I'm full of praise once again once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life Once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you, once again I'll pour out my life Ooh, Once again I thank you, once again I'll pour out my life Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. I hope all of you are doing well in these times and I'm really glad to welcome all of you to another episode of Youth Focus. As we are in our youth, we really like to explore the internet, we like to go out and socialize with our friends and we are addicted to online and social media. But in the midst of all of this, as the children of God, how do we stand firm in our faith when we are faced with such situations? And how do we know what decisions to take and are right in the eyes of the Lord? Today we have with us evangelist Dr. Joel Albert, who is going to speak on the topic of our convictions versus the world and is going to clear some of our doubts and uncertainties. Let us now sit prayerfully and hear from the word of God. May his name be glorified. My dear brothers and sisters, when we look at our lives and especially at our Christian life and the enemies that we face in our Christian life, there are three enemies that the scriptures mention and you may all know about them. But let me just reiterate them for those who may not know. The first enemy that we face in our life is the world. The second one is the devil. The third one is the flesh. In this video, I would like to talk to you about the first enemy that a youngster faces in this world. And yes, it is the world itself. But what does it mean? Because we just use the word world two times. What does it mean that the world is our enemy? My dear ones, it does not mean that the earth is our enemy. But in fact, for that we need to understand a very important principle that the scripture teaches us. And that principle is mentioned in the letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 12, where Paul teaches us and tells us the difference between the within and the without of the assembly. There's something within the assembly and then there's something without the assembly. Within the assembly or within the church, we have the discipline that is there. We have the order that is there. 
we also have the strong doctrinal foundation we have the ordinances that are set by the lord there is a different standard that is set by the scriptures and the lord expects every believer to follow that in the local assembly but my dear ones there is the without aspect that is mentioned there and that speaks to us about the world the culture of the world the standard set by the world the various other things that it entails and that is why my dear ones we need to understand one very important thing the world outside that means anything that does not come under the discipline or under the local assembly all of that is in the world so the culture of the world or the things of the world the practices of the world the society outside is something that we need to be very careful of because the standard set by god and the standard set by the world are very different god's standard have and always will remain the same but the standards of the world as you all may know are changing from day to day think of the moral standards think of the ethical standards think of the world and how it is going from bad to worse and that is why we as christians especially as young believers need to be very careful because we are the ones who are exposed to this culture a lot i'm not telling that we should just totally cut ourselves off from the outside world but we should be careful of the practices and the various other things that the world tries to imbibe into our hearts and that is why i would like to draw your attention to daniel chapter 1 where we read about these four youngsters who stood for the lord it is specially mentioned about daniel and how he stood firm on his convictions you see when we turn to daniel chapter 1 and when we read the first few verses especially verses 3 and 4 we understand that these young men were brilliant young men from a good family background and what was done to them was they were plucked out of their place they were taken to a different place they were taught new practices even their personalities their identities were as at a risk of being changed you see daniel and hanania mishael and azariah their names were changed to babylonian names their names which had very good spiritual meanings were changed to that of worldly names or babylonian names which had nothing to do with god so we need to understand one thing these young men these young boys that were plucked out of the land of judea and brought into the land of babylon now had a great task in front of them now if we look at them and compare them to today's youngsters and if we compare babylon of that day to today's world we would have said that they would have hit the jackpot through a worldly view if we look at that we would understand that they had gone to the best city in the world they had gone to the place which had the best architecture the best universities the greatest and the latest that the world had ever to offer in that particular moment of time was in babylon but my dear ones through a spiritual perspective they were going from a spiritual land to a pagan land and because of that we need to understand something very important when they went there it says there about daniel that daniel was a very different person when we read the particular verse that mentions about what daniel did we read in verse 8 and when we read verse eight onwards we understand it says there that one sentence it really touches my heart and daniel purposed in his heart what does it mean daniel made a covenant with himself daniel decided for himself daniel stood firm to his convictions because what happened there was as we all know the babylonian customs and the babylonian food that was being set before them the good non vegetarian food we we could say the best buffets or the best uh, tables that were set before them it was as if they would have received the best food that they would ever have seen in their life 
but daniel understood something these foodstuffs these things were not to be consumed by them it was against their convictions it was against what the lord had taught them and that is why daniel stood firm along with his friends they stood firm to their convictions and said that we will not eat of this daniel purposed in his heart and what did daniel do further not only did he purpose in his heart but he practiced what he had purposed it is not just important to have a conviction but it is important to practice that in our life and once we do that only then we can preach we can tell others about that because our life should show first first within myself i purpose in my heart then i practice it in my personal life and then i preach it to others i show others through my words first through my deeds and then to my words that i am a person who will stand firm to his or her conviction my dear ones in this world today we are not facing something very much different from what daniel was facing you see the world today and the culture of the world is constantly being bombarded in our lives be it through the internet be it through the television be it through any other form of media that you are looking at all of these things have one thing in mind to imbibe and to bombard the culture of the world into the hands of young believers you see if you make one of us youngsters stand on one side and an older uncle or an auntie on another side and ask us our thoughts on premarital relationships on extramarital relationships on marriage and divorce or even about immorality in general ask them about movies ask them about various other such things which the world has to offer and we will understand that the youngsters have a more liberal point of view when it comes to the things of the world than the people of the previous generation you know why because every single movie that we watch every single tv show that you watch all of those things are slowly and steadily imbibing the culture of the world into our lives and that is why we need we need to be very careful we need to be very careful when it comes to the media that we consume we need to be very careful when it comes to the friends that we have we need to be very careful when it comes to the things that we do when we are in the world outside i have come across many youngsters who have faced a great culture shock when they have gone outside the assembly and into the world because the world outside does not have those high standards that are set by the lord it does not have the limitations that are set by the lord it does not have that discipline that is set by the lord and what we need to do is like daniel those three things that he did number 1 purpose in our heart stand firm to our convictions remember what we were taught in the local assembly and stand firm to those convictions secondly practice that let others see that we are different yes many of us feel the peer pressure and we try to identify with the people of the world but may they understand that though we are friends with them we are different and may they understand that we are people who fear the lord and when they see that through our practice and then when we preach to them believe me they will listen and they will listen attentively to a person who stands firm to his or her convictions and that is why daniel teaches us in a simple way how to face the culture of the world how to stand firm to our convictions doesn't the hymn writer remind us in that beautiful hymn that many of us may have sung even in sunday school dare to be a daniel dare to stand alone dare to have a purpose firm and dare to make it known may the lord help us to understand this and may we be able to stand strong against the devices that the world brings in front of us may the lord bless us all amen hope that is a great blessing and encouragement to all of you till we all meet again let's sit prayerfully and keep all these thoughts in our mind may his name be glorified i'm broken inside once again i thank you 
once again I'll pour out my life Ooh, Once again I thank you Once again I'll pour out my life